today I'm going to be deflasking some pink princess. All of the little plants are inside of the sealed container. Ta da! I have three of these flasks here today. The roots are in a jelly like substance, very, very slowly coming apart. So, as you can see, they have now all been potted up, and look at how good they are. Welcome back to today's video. If you are new to this channel, hello, my name is Rachel and I run my own business here in Auckland, New Zealand called Growing Green and we sell everything houseplant related from the houseplants themselves to the accessories to help your plants grow big and strong. Make sure to check out our website which is www.growinggreen.nz if you are in New Zealand. And let's just get straight on into today's video. So today, as you know by the title down below, I'm going to be deflasking some philodendron pink princess. Now when I'm filming this, this is a couple of months in the past because I want to give you guys a really good idea of, you know, kind of the flow of how things happen and how they go growing wise so you kind of get the full picture rather than just like bits and pieces here and there so if that sounds like something you're interested in make sure to keep watching and if you do enjoy this at the end of the video make sure to hit that like button down below so I know what kind of videos you guys like to see so yeah let's just get straight on into the video so I'm actually going to google a definition for you because it's probably better than anything I'm going to come up with on the top of my head as per a google definition tissue culture involves the use of small pieces of plant tissue which are cultured in nutrient medium under sterile conditions so basically what this means is that plants are grown from clones of parent plants so for example you take some tissue from another plant and you clone it in the medium and then it grows new plants from that it's considered to be one of the quickest and cheapest and easiest ways to grow plants to help meet the demand in the plant industry if you didn't know already I used to grow all of my own plants just from like normal standard propagation like cutting and stuff like that but I am not able to keep up with demand that way um, so I have decided to start buying some plants in via tissue culture and deflasking them and growing them on myself so first of all if you don't know what deflasking is it is basically taking plants that have been cloned via tissue culture out of a flask and potting them up ready to grow on if you want a little bit more info on what tissue culture is and how it's done I will pop some links in the description box down below for you I am by no means an expert myself I've got a rough idea of how it works um, but I'm kind of just around with the actual deflasking and growing them on side of things to start with so today I'm going to be deflasking some pink princess I'll give you some close-up shots so you can actually see what they look like so this is what the flask looks like you can get different kind of flasks from different growers this one is actually just plastic as you can see here but you can get some glass ones as well and as you can see it is all closed up and sterile so as soon as you open that seal it becomes non-sterile and you have to go ahead with obviously putting them all up there is no going back and as you can see there are lots of little plants in there and you can also see their little roots growing along here too so it's a very very good sign so while I was filming that my husband came along and said because I said there's no going back once you open it and he said there's no growing back you're welcome laugh of the day that's what I have to deal with all the damn time <laughs> And then here's the other one. I bought two flasks. This one, unfortunately, as you can see, got a little bit battered in the post. And it's not a round um, flask anymore. It is just, it's like a triangle. So we're going to have to open that up and see how that is as well. I'm sure they'll be fine. They look fine in there. They just need to be done today. So yeah, that is what the flasks look like. So I'm going to now take them down to my bench, down the back, and show you how I unflask them. So obviously the first step is to deflask them. And to do that, all you do is just unwrap the lid, open it up, and they're deflasked. <laughs> So I will do that and then I will take you over to the bench and show you what we do next. Let's cut some of this around the outside. Bless you. Hopefully you can see this alright. I'm trying to film it for a TikTok as well. Then I just remove this the entire way around. Like so. And then we're ready to take the lid off. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. Look at all the little plants. How cute is that? All right, now we are over at my potting table. I have two containers of water. One is going to be just normal water and it's lukewarm by the way because it helps to get the agar jelly off the roots. And the other one I'm going to be putting some fungicide in. And then the next step, of course, is to take these little cuties out of here. Now I'm actually going to maybe get a pair of tweezers. I'm not 100% sure. We're kind of just going to make it up as we go because these look pretty tightly packed in there. Or they might all come out in one bunch, so we'll just have a look. <laughs> I'm going to just get in there right from the bottom and see if I can't just loosen it up in one big chunk. Oh, I think I can. I pull very, very gently. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ta da! Look at that. It came out on one clump. Look at that. That's the agar jelly in the bottom. That's what they are grown in. 
so we need to now pop that in the water and get all of that off so now we have our little clump i'm going to pop it in just the normal water with nothing in it to split them up and remove all that agar jelly on the bottom and you're just going to shake them apart very very lightly so you don't damage the roots and you can sort of see the agar floating away here <laughs> at the bottom hopefully you can see that it's very very slowly coming apart you've just got to be very very gentle there we go there's one parting <laughs> all right so if i bring this up closer to you hopefully without spilling it everywhere this is about as close as i can get it but you can see all the little plants are separated now and are floating in that water so the next step is i'm going to transfer them from this container of water which is just regular water into this one here and i'm going to be putting some antifungal stuff in here and this is the one i am using it is just from bunnings if i remember rightly um any antifungal stuff will do and i just have it in this container because i split it with my mum so I'm just going to open this up, get a little bit in my pipette, and it's about three mil there, so I'm going to pop it in here and just give it a good swirl around. Now the reason we do this is to make sure that the plants that have come out of the flask don't get any kind of fungal stuff on them before they go into their new containers and their new substrates. So when they grow on they have enough time to grow the root and nothing fungal or moldy is going to eat away at the plants. So I'm just going to transfer them from here to here. So as you can see, a lot of these are pretty big coming out of the flask. Now this is a lot bigger than I would normally like them to be. Um, this one is definitely well, well, well overdue for a flask. So hopefully they'll do all right. They're just growing a little bit awkwardly. I might have to chop them down once they're a little bit established and then grow them on from there, but we'll see. Now those are soaking, they're going to be in there for about 15 odd minutes to really just kill any kind of bacteria that are in there. Meanwhile, I'm going to be setting up to pot them up. So these are our six centimeter clear pots that I'm going to be using to pot them up in. They're nice and small, and I'm going to be potting them some in spag moss and bark, and some in tree fern fiber, just to do kind of like a little bit of an experiment to see how they go. All right, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes, and now I'm going to pot up the first few into tree fern fiber. So I'm gonna grab my cup, put a little bit of tree fern fiber in it like that, and then pot it up. It looks a little bit scraggedy and scrawny and it's just been deflar so it's a little bit sad but hopefully in the next few days or so it will perk up a little bit. Again a little bit scrawny looking but hopefully that will perk up soon. Ta-da! There is the first one in Spagmoss. So now that those are all done, I'm going to water them in with this CCS Clonex cloning solution from Growth Technology. This stuff is amazing. If you can get your hands on it, definitely do. Um, it's a rooting hormone, basically, so you just water your plants in like normal, and it helps accelerate the growth of your roots. So I'm just going to water them in with that. I've also filled up another tray with a little bit of damp sphagnum moss to help keep it nice and moist in the prop box while they are obviously rooting. I'm of course then going to write a little tag with the name of the plant on the front and the date that I deflasked them on the back. Which is, I have no idea. <laughs> it is the 7th, cool, good to know. There we go, it's 7th of the 12th, 2022. And then of course I'm going to pop a lid on it. And it's good to go. And as you can see they're all just hanging out in there. I've actually done some deflasking a month ago um, for these jewel orchids. And as you can see, they are doing really, really well. And there's some more over here as well. They're all doing it very good. I haven't lost a single one, which is nice. And obviously some phalaenopsis over here as well. So that's all for today's part of the video. I will come back to you when I see something happening or yeah, just when I notice anything. So yeah, see you soon. So I thought I was going to end the video there and just post that. However, I decided to wait a few months so you guys actually get some results from this video as well. Because I know I personally hate when I watch these types of videos and then they never give an update ever um, because it's been a few months and you know, you just kind of forget about it. It's now a few months later. 
and then I was editing this video and I was like okay well I also got a few extra flasks and after this I got some ring of fire as well and some more pink princess so I'm actually going to also insert the footage of the ring of fires being the flask and then I will come back and show you the results and how they look like today I'm actually going to show you what I'm going to be deflasking so flasks come in different shapes and sizes these are the ones I'm going to be deflasking today but you also get flasks that look like this there are a couple of different types of flasks it just means they're in like a sterile container it's a little bit condensated in there but hopefully you can see this just fine and as you can see they have plenty of roots on the bottom so they are definitely wanting to be deflasked as soon as possible so I have three of these flasks here today I'm going to deflask so of course the first thing you're gonna do is open up your flask so these ones are saran wrapped or glad wrapped or whatever you want to call it so I'm just going to open it up like so and then you just take the lid off and Ta -da! So all your little tissue culture plants just bursting to get out of the little container that they're in. This one looks really nice and full. <laughs> wow. Now normally in a flask you'll get anywhere from 5, 10, 15 plants. Yeah, sometimes you can actually see exactly how many plants there are, but most of the time when you buy them it's just kind of like a guess. So um, I'm expecting about 10 per, per flask. So yeah, let's go to the bench. time to deflask. So as you can see here we have our lovely flask and I'm going to tip it out and show you what it looks like. So the roots are in a jelly like substance. Now this is called agar and this is actually what the plants live off while they're inside of the container. The thing with agar though is when you take them out it actually attracts fungicides and bacteria etc etc hence why we dip them in a fungicide when we deflask them so they don't attach to the plants and eat away at them before you can actually grow them so we've actually got to separate them from this and that is the reason we have warm water in the actual puddle down below so that the agar easily splits up so let's do that now and I've also got gloves on because fungicide is no joke and it smells <laughs> and there we go just pop it in the water you're just going to give it a bit of a wiggle, try and get the water in there and loosen up that agar at the bottom. All of this stuff it should just start to break away. If you have a short attention span, deflasking is not for you. <laughs> these were so root bound, the pink princess is just like fell apart. But these are so root bound. Come on, <laughs> break apart and you're going to lose leaves and it's fine, it happens. So I've managed to finally break away the first plant. Ta-da! Look at that, it's big! And see it's got some decent roots coming off the bottom there. Once you separate them you just got to make sure to get as much of that agar jelly off the bottom as possible uh, before you pop them up. Alrighty, we have now deflasked all of our plants. They've been sitting in here for a little while. Now I'm going to take them out one by one and just pop them on this paper towel here to dry off just a tad. I have made two more prop boxes with a little bit of slightly damp sphag moss in the bottom. Uh, this is because once I pop them up in these little six centimeter clear pots, they're going to be popped in the prop boxes with the lid on it and the moss will help keep it nice and moist in there without having to water them all the time. And I'm gonna be using a mix of sphagnum moss and tree fern fiber because I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. So I'm gonna pop a bit of fern fiber in the bottom. So you're gonna wanna pop as much of those roots in the tree fern fiber as possible. And then this is a little bit tricky, but you're going to fill up this side. Don't worry if you bury some leaves, it is what it is. Just fill it up so that the roots are covered. And remember, always tap them in, don't push them in, because otherwise those roots won't have anywhere to go. And there we go, you have your first little tissue culture plant ready to grow on. So I'm going to do a few like this, and then I'm also going to do some in sphag moss. So as you can see they have now all been potted up, it takes quite a while. We have the tree fern fiber bunch and the sphagnum moss bunch. Now what I'm going to do is water them in with the Growth Technology CCS Clonex cloning solution. So here they are on the shelf all officially ready to grow on. How cute is that? So they will remain in here for the next month and then I will come back to you with an update when there is some progress. It's now the 21st of January and I'm going to be showing you the results from the deflasking for both obviously the Pink Princess and the Ring of Fire. And I'm also going to give you a little bit of detail kind of like on how I cared for them in between when I potted them up and now. So let's head over behind me and take a quick look at them. So here is that same shelf but it is now about a month and a month and a half on later. 
I am so excited to give you an update on these. They look so good. So I'm going to start in this tray here. And this is the first batch of pink princess I did. So the ones that you actually saw me do on camera. And let's have a look. This is the first batch of pink princess that I did. And look at how good they are. I am so impressed with how well these went. This is one obviously in tree fern fiber. And as you can see, it has pushed out several new leaves since being in the prop box. And it is pushing out another leaf as we speak. They all honestly look so lush and healthy. And they are truly honestly just about ready to be sold. Because they are at such a good stage. I mean, some of them are a little bit smaller still. And some are kind of struggling. But you're going to get that with tissue culture. They're never all going to completely live and be fine. But yeah, I'm just super, super impressed. This one is even thrown out like a half moon leaf. Look at that. How cute! And in regards to tree fern fiber versus sphagnum moss, I think they kind of have been doing about the same. I mean, if you look at this one here and this one here, they're kind of the same size and I've kind of had like equal success with both. So conclusion for that experiment, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of what suits you best. And then I'm going to move over to here and these are the ring of fire that I did. So I only did one batch of those. So let's open that up and have a look. Look at them. Ah! so good i cannot believe that they have done so well but look at that they are so healthy and are doing so well same as the pink princess they have been pushing out leaves something chronic so i am really really happy with those those are the ones in the tree fern fiber and i'll open the lid of this one and these are the ones in the spag moss and as you can see honestly they are doing just as well as the ones in the tree fern fiber. So again, not really any kind of like amazing results from either or. They're kind of just exactly the same. So again, it's whatever suits you. And then over the back there, I did a second lot of Pink Princess about, I'd say two weeks after the first lot. So it'll be nice to see the progression of how they're growing. But yeah, I mean, if you take a look at those, they look just as good as the ones I did two weeks prior. So safe to say i think i'm pretty confident with deflasking all of these now in regards to the kind of care that i did for these in between deflasking them and today for the first two weeks i left them in their prop box with the lids completely shut and by that i mean the little green things that are on top of these you know what they are um i left them completely shut for the first two weeks um so they could get used to their substrate and then what i did after two weeks is i opened the little green things on the top of the greenhouse opened both of them to let them get a bit of the air from the environment that they are going to be in. My plan with this was to kind of acclimatize them as slowly as possible um, because obviously they're you know precious little plants um, they do sometimes go into a little bit of shock if you introduce them too quickly so I did that and then at the one month mark I take the lid off completely and then they're on their own. <laughs> and just looking at these results like I said I am pretty confident now with the flasking plants and getting them to grow on there's always going to be some degree of loss with them and the best way to learn how to do these things is to just do it and experiment and yes you might lose some but you will learn a great deal from it and this is definitely something I'm going to be doing quite a lot more in the future because like I said it is a fantastic way to get more varieties into my shop um, quicker because like you know propagating pink princesses takes ages and there's I think more loss with that in regards to um, percentage wise kind of thing um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed this and I will definitely be doing more of this in the future. So that is all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this. It's definitely something different. It's been a passion project for almost two months now. Um, it's definitely something that is fun um, and something different to just, you know, keeping your plants alive. And it's, and it's funny because tissue culture wasn't really a thing here in this country. Yes, there were businesses that were doing it, but no one was kind of really posting about it publicly. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to finally get this video out and kind of show you guys what it's like behind the scenes of my you know experience experimenting with it and ever since I started posting about it a couple of months ago I've seen it pop up a little bit more here and there with other people trying it out as well which is really cool to see thank you so much for watching I really really hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it if you did make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below it only takes two seconds and it really helps me kind of know what videos you guys like me to create and if you did enjoy this video and want to see more like this make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload upload and I also love chatting with you guys as well so if you had any more questions or comments or if you've had experience with tissue culture make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and we can have a chat about it thank you guys so much and I will see you in my next video bye guys so yeah that is what the flasks look like I'm um, so yeah that is what the asshole let's cut some of this around the outside bless you bless you
just have to rip into this one. Hang on a minute. Paper goes the way you want it to, does it? So the first few I'm gonna do are. Blah, blah. There's saran wrap everywhere. And look at those. Excuse my Brazil. Go over there. Go away. Thank you. 